Hi, everyone. Here we are again with another episode of The Shift with Gina. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being here. It's just me today. No guests today. We're going to talk about a trending video that has been all over the internet um, about a, a disgruntled millennial mom. And I think her sentiments are very familiar and uh, they resonate with a lot of other moms around the country right now. So we'll get into that in a minute. Um, and of course, first, we're going to tell you about our sponsors, but I uh, just want to check in and say hi, everyone. It's You know, it's hard now to get all the way to the microphone because my belly's in the way of the table. Um, it's getting harder to kind of lean in these days. My goodness, it's, it's all happening. Um, I spent a little bit too much time yesterday meal prepping. I always meal prep on Saturday or Sunday for the week because I have to make sure that we have enough food for, especially my husband's lunch. I pack his breakfast and lunch every day because he's out of the house for so long every weekday. So I try to have everything packed, which means I have to have all the food ready. So yesterday I was in the kitchen for four hours. I don't know what I was thinking. It usually does not take that long to meal prep. Usually for the whole week, it takes two hours. But I think yesterday I... I don't know what I was doing. I think maybe I tried a recipe that took a little bit longer than usual. I don't know. I made like four different things in the kitchen and um, it was uh, my daughter pooped her pants yesterday because we're potty training her. Um, and I forgot to show her. We got home from my mom's house after church. We stopped by my mom's house and ate a little bit of pasta. And then when we came home, I forgot to show her where the potty was. I was like, okay, we're home. And you know, she's got no diaper on now. She just had her pants on. And um, all of a sudden I'm like, oh my goodness. In the kitchen, I thought to myself, oh crap, I forgot to show her where the potty was. <laughs> so I run into her room and she's now at this age where she's starting to play by herself, which is really nice because I can get things done. But then I walk in and I just smell poop and I'm like, oh no. And she's sort of in this crouched over position and she looks at me, she goes, no, no. Like she knows that she pooped in her pants and she doesn't want me to change it because she just, you know, I don't know. She just doesn't want to be, I don't know. I think she's still kind of scared of seeing the poop. Anyway, so that was that. So yesterday was a lot going on. I stayed in the kitchen for a little bit too long and now with the big belly, I um I slept in a little this morning. So that's 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 the news with me. I always have the most boring updates for you guys because life is pretty boring when I mean, you know, relatively. When you're pregnant and have a toddler, it's just sort of like just doing all the things at home and trying to get everything done. Um so we're going to talk more about motherhood today. No no potty training though. This video is is really is a really good one to watch because I feel her heart break through the phone. And I hate to see it because she seems like such a sweet mom who really cares about her kids. But before we get into the video, I want to tell you about our sponsor today called Upward News. For those of you who like to be updated on what's happening in the news and in culture, Upward News is great because it just sends you a newsletter in your email inbox once a week. Um, I think it's actually twice a week. It's however often it is. It's really useful because it's short. No, every day. What am I saying? Once a week, twice a week. I'm looking at my inbox now. It's there every day. And it's really short, easy, uh, easy ways to consume the news. So if you look here on my screen, I'm looking in the, the latest release from yesterday, right? And it's just sort of a summary of what we're watching. The Air Force, I, I, a, new, a new generation of AI pilots. That's scary. Over 8 million illegal immigrants will be backlogged in the US this year. And then it goes into some of the more headline stories like the EU targets Elon Musk in free speech, appeals court rejects harsh January 6 sentences. And there's just a lot of stuff in this email that's so easy to look at, digest, and then you're done. I think right now a lot of us are kind of sick of the outrage news cycle where everyone is spending a lot of time talking about the same news stories and it's just it's just a lot. I really like Upward News because it's an easy way to just consume the most important things that are happening without all of the nonsense around it. So if you want, this newsletter is free to subscribe to. They also have a paid premium version. I have the premium version because I like to read more of the in-depth articles. But if you like to just have this free newsletter in your inbox to just catch up on what's going on, click the link in my description and it's for free. All you have to do is give your email and It'll come in your inbox and give you the basics. I think one thing that I've been really interested in keeping up with lately is all of the illegal immigrants coming across the border and the numbers and the crimes associated with a lot of these violent criminals. Um, it's something that I think we need to really watch out for. 
and something that has to be fixed this year with this election. It's got to be fixed because it's only getting worse and worse and worse. Okay, let's watch the video for today. This is a mom who lives in Idaho, I think, somewhere out there, somewhere out there. She runs a cute little Airbnb with her husband. She's also a social worker. And in this video, she is describing how she thinks millennial moms were lied to. So let's take a look. I feel like millennial moms were just duped. I just dropped my daughter off at her daycare and she's been going to daycare for almost three years now. And people tell me, it'll get easier, it'll e get easier as you drop her off, she'll get used to it. It has never gotten easier. I've just learned to numb the pain. And it doesn't help the fact that, you know, my career is in early childhood. So she goes through spurts where she's really excited for daycare. And then she goes through spurts like this morning where she has to talk herself through, mommy's gonna come back after work. And she's anxious and she tells me her belly hurts and there's butterflies in her tummy. And I'm a social worker by trade. So I've learned to help give her, you know, those words to say, or, you know, practicing coping skills. And, you know, when she misses mommy, what she can do. But like, why do I have to do that? I feel like I was duped because, you know, when you're 20 years old or, you know, when you're in high school, you're told to go to college, get a good degree, make something of your life. And so what? I did. I got my bachelor's degree in social work. I had my master's degree in social work by the time I was 25. And then by the time I was 30 years old and had my first child, I had spent five years in the schools making just shy of $100,000 now. The more years you put in, you establish that pension 401k and I keep climbing the ladder. I buy an Airbnb with my husband, with all of our savings, that's doing well. And then I have kids and somehow I'm just supposed to say goodbye to all of that. And it's, I'm okay with saying goodbye to my career. It's the fact that we have put ourselves in a position that if I had to quit my job, we would have to uproot our entire life. And that's okay. I'm okay with being in a smaller house. I'm okay with maybe not doing as much, but I feel like I can't make that commitment with time. I don't have time. It's just easier to keep on this stupid hamster wheel. And the parents of millennials like myself, you know, were pushing us, have kids. When are you having kids? I got married at 24 and I waited five years to get pregnant. Have kids, have kids. And then the kids come, there's no help. <laughs> Granted, like I get the help I can and my mother-in-law is great, but she's older and you know, my mom lives far away. And every single minute of our lives is just planned. And not only that, we're trying as a generation of millennial moms to undo the parenting that was presented to us when we were children. So now we have more people doing responsive parenting or you know, that gentle. Okay, I think that, that that's enough. She goes on for about another minute and a half, but I think that gives us the gist of it. Um, man, that's really sad. That's it's a, it's a really sad thing to see. And a lot of people were sharing the um, sharing the video online. And they were talking about how is is she right? Or are millennials just soft now? Um, and I think she she sums it up really well when she says millennial moms were lied to. We were told to get a good education. We were told to prioritize that education and um, get married and have a responsible life before having kids. But then they have kids. And then not only do they have to be separated from their kids because they, they have to send their kids to daycare, but then they don't have any help from family, not even only from family, but from a high trust community. Because this is something that I've talked about many times before. I'm sure you guys remember in past episodes, we talk about how we don't live in a high trust society anymore. We don't live in these high trust villages and communities where moms have the help that all of our ancestors had forever. It's actually weird. We've ended up in this place where moms are almost chastised and condemned for having help with their kids as if like, I don't know, it's this weird it, it what it actually is, and this is I'm not going to do a deep dive into this, but what it actually is is um, this sort of American puritanical Protestant work ethic thing where it's the, the the nuclear family is isolated from the extended family in the village, and the whole idea is that you take care of your own kids, you pull yourself up by your own bootstraps, and while that message has its pros and it has its benefits, it also has a lot of downsides. And I think that's what has been instilled in many Western American families is that you got to do it all on your own. And that's why we end up with a lot of these boomer parents who are like, I did my job. I'm done. You don't get any of my help. I raised my kids and that's it. 
That is a very Western puritanical mindset. And I think that's really harmful to moms because, guys, that's not how any moms lived ever in history. Our ancestors did not live like this at all. And our ancestors certainly didn't live by dropping off their kids to be raised by strangers somewhere so that the mom could go to a cold office and go to work. So, you know, following the path and listening to what we, we were told from a young age, I was told the same thing. You go get a good education. The education was like the big priority, but we were never really told what kind of education to get because when we were growing up as millennials, it was not public knowledge yet of how predatory universities were and liberal arts educations were. So we weren't really taught that there were good career paths when it comes to setting yourself for a family. Uh, and there are poor career paths when you're setting yourself up for a family and becoming a mother one day. Um, so this has left many moms heartbroken because they have to be separated from their children during the children's younger years. So that's why the conversation of federally mandated maternity leave does not help. I did an episode on this a, few, a couple weeks ago where a lot of women, even on the right, are like, the solution is maternity leave should be demanded for moms because they have more time at home with their kids. And then I had, I you know posted a video on my Instagram and there were a couple moms, well, quite a few moms who were like, the answer is maternity leave. I live in Canada and I got a year off. My husband got six months off. I'm like, okay, but that's not the solution because let's apply it to this woman here in the video. If you give her a year long maternity leave, so what? She's gonna have to put her kid into daycare when the kid's one year old. The kid is three and she's still heartbroken. She's got tears in her eyes because she's got to drop the kid off at daycare to be raised by somebody that she doesn't know. And maternity leave is not going to solve that because you're not, you're, what, your employer's going to pay you for three years not to work? That's not, how it, that's not how it works, guys. Maternity leave is not the answer here. So what are the solutions that we're offering to this? Because on the right, we're being told now, marry a rich man, marry a real man. That's the... That's the language now, which we're going to talk about in a second, but I find that to just be so like gaslighting and insulting to tell women to, oh, your man's on a real man if he can't afford to provide for the whole family just in a single income. Women are told to not go to school now. This is a new thing on the right. They're like, don't waste your time at all with education. Just become a housewife because you got to focus on your kids and your kids only. So these solutions... I don't think we can have an honest discussion about helping mothers and helping families unless we talk about the state of our economy. Okay, this is, we're not going to have an honest conversation unless we address that our economy is worse than ever. And it's scary how much harder it is for families to live on a single income, especially when they have multiple kids. I've spoken to probably hundreds of moms in recent weeks because I've been posting a lot more content on my Instagram and my Twitter about the struggles that families are having living on a single income. And I feel like not many people are talking about it, especially on the right. I mean, people on the left are talking about it, but their solution is like maternity leave and and the dad should chip in more. But people on the right who claim to be pro-family and pro-motherhood and pro pro-natalist they are many of them are sort of ignoring the fact that our economy is in the toilet. And I've spoken to hundreds of moms in my DMs who have come to me and expressed that it's much harder now than it was five to 10 years ago for their families to just survive on their husband's single income. They have cut all the corners, they've made all the sacrifices, and many of them still need the wife and the mother to work at least part time to make ends meet. And this was not the case even just five to 10 years ago, certainly not the case 20 to 30 years ago. This is a very, it's a pretty new development. I mean, I've had a lot of people independently say even in the last eight months, costs of groceries and housing costs, things have gotten so out of control and interest rates just keep climbing and climbing. And of course, we're, we're looking at record high inflation that the government is not being honest about. The government's like, oh, it's only 6% inflation. Are you kidding me? No way. What are we, stupid? Stop gaslighting us. And then you have, you know, you have the Biden's administration saying how Biden's created the most jobs and this is the best economy you've ever had. It's just, it makes you crazy how much we're being gaslit. And so I know that there are many moms out there who have sacrificed, many families who have sacrificed a lot in order for the mother to stay home with their young children. We did. You know, I, I feel blessed. And I think a lot of moms who are in my shoes feel blessed to be able to stay home. You know, I was in the kitchen for four hours yesterday. I, I feel grateful I'm able to do that. 
I really am so grateful that I'm able to pack my husband his breakfast and his lunch every day before he goes to work. Um, and I'm blessed that I'm able to bring in a side income from home with just a few hours of work a week and be with my daughter and, and so both of my kids. But it's becoming clear to me that there are a lot of moms out there, more moms than ever in our society who are not able to do this. Rec like I said, record high inflation, housing costs out of control, groceries more expensive than ever, gas more expensive than ever. My heart breaks every time I speak to a mom who wishes that she could stay home with her babies. They really want to stay home. And like I said, even though there are many families who have been able to cut corners and make it work for the mom to stay home, that's not a reality for every single family. And it's not because they're not working hard enough and not because their husband's not manly enough. It's because our economy sucks right now. And that is a big part of the conversation that few people on the right are willing to have. And sadly, one thing that I have noticed from many stay-at-home moms who are online, not all of them, but one a trend that I have noticed is that it's easy for stay-at-home moms to develop a superiority complex. They act as if their desire and their their ability and decision to stay home with their kids somehow makes them a better mother than the mother who has to work. And they have no compassion and they often chalk it up to a woman's husband not being manly enough and a woman being too materialistic and the mother not caring enough caring enough about her children. And look, you know, I'll admit I, I've struggled with these holier than thou thoughts in the past because it's easy. If you're a mom who quit her job to stay home with her kids and you and your husband are able to make it work, it's easy to look at other families who did not do the same and feel like you're better than them. Because it's e that, that's a very human thing, right? Humans, we're, we're inclined to compare ourselves to others. We're inclined to judge others. That's why we need Christ, because Christ is the one who comes in and he's the ultimate physician and he helps heal us. Because without him, it's easy to compare ourselves and to judge and feel superior. And and I, I, I don't think that's the answer. I think that's much more harmful than it is good. You know, I, I gave up I gave up a very comfortable six-figure salary, um, a dream job. People thought I was crazy for quitting my job with Candace. They thought I was nuts. And, you know, I close proximity to very famous people and um, really fun trips and extravagant stuff involved with work. And it was an amazing job. And I like, I almost shocked myself that I even wanted to quit because I thought when I was pregnant, I thought I was going to be a working mom. You know, you go girl. I got six weeks of maternity leave. And when I came back, I just couldn't do it. I just, I cried on the way back on my first day. Um, at the time, my mom was, my mom was still really sick. And so she was home and she wasn't working at the time. So she was able to like help out with my daughter because my daughter was so little at that point, six weeks, there's nothing you can really do except like feed them the breast milk bottle and, and, and they sleep. From maternity leave, um, I, uh, I, I requested a time to work from home. They gave me three months to work from home and I still, I went home for about two or three days. I worked from home and I realized I'm not gonna wanna go back to work in three months and leave her. So that's when I turned in my notice and I quit. And it was, it was a hard decision. It was hard, but it was easy at the same time. You know what I mean? I, I think a lot of people know what I mean by that. When you have these decisions in front of you, that's like, of course, you know, this is the right decision, but it's still hard. And after that, when you go through these experiences as a mom and you make major sacrifices to stay home with your kids, like I said, it's easy to develop a superiority complex. Um, and it's easy to feel like you are a better mom than the moms out there who are still working. You know, it's like oh, you, you kind of get this feeling, right? Even if it's just an internal thing that you feel for for just a moment, even if you don't say anything online or make comments about it, it's easy to feel that way, right? And sure, there are a lot of families out there who would rather have material things and an extra income rather than sacrifice for their children's well-being. But there are even more families in the current state of our economy who are doing everything they can and they still can't make it work on a single income. And I think that these families deserve compassion, not condemnation. And I think for their sake, well, I mean, for all of our sakes, but especially for their sake, we need something to change in order to make this country more livable for the average family. And this is the sort of position that I've... I found myself in, in in recent months because 
Like I said, it's really easy. And I see this a lot in the comment section. I see this a lot from influencers. They will make comments and replies and videos about how, you know, any mom can do it. If I did it, any mom can do it. If you really want to stay home with the, with your kids, you'll make a way. And like I said, again, in the past, I have been guilty of having these same feelings too, but I don't think this is useful or helpful to moms. I don't know the, the mom in this particular video. I don't know her exact situation. It sounds like she makes a, a pretty good six-figure salary. I don't know if they could make it on a single income. I'm assuming they might be able to, who knows? I don't know about her situation, but I do know for sure that this holier than thou superiority complex that's coming from a lot of stay at home moms online is not helpful. It's not productive. It's not the answer. All it does is drive more moms away. It drives them away from us. It drives them away from our cause and drives them away from our values. And it doesn't help them solve the issue. I think that if we if we really want more moms to stay at home, if we want to be pro-family and pro-mothers, pro-natalists, then we have to be pro-family and pro-mom and pro-natalists. And part of that is offering solutions and putting our heads together to ask ourselves, what can we do to make a better culture and a better society for families? Because this is our duty. It's not just your problem, it's our problem. And I think if we approach it more with that mindset, it will be much more useful. Because, you know, right now, I think it's just the superiority complex is not helpful. And it breaks my heart when I see a lot of moms. Like I posted a video probably last week and there are a couple of moms. This one woman was like, um, if you marry a real man, he'll work five jobs if he has to and you get to stay home with your kids. But women don't want to marry a real man. I'm like, do you guys hear yourselves? This is not, this is not helpful. You're accusing a woman, let's say a family that has six kids, and I've had many women in my inbox lately who come to me and express their deep disappointment and their sadness because they have six kids and they're not, they're not able to survive on the single income that they were just five years ago. So you're saying that that woman didn't marry a real man. Why? Because he doesn't have you know, the exact income that he needs in this economy to cover six kids and a growing family. It's just, it's accusatory and it's catty and it's nasty and it's unnecessary. So then you think about the trad trend online that has blown up in the last couple of years, right? I think because there are so many women expressing their frustration and disappointment about the state of their life and about motherhood and about the fact that they have to work, this has fueled a lot more stay at home influencers who have gotten really popular because these, you know, women disgruntled working moms they get online and they like to see the ideal life, right? That's the whole thing with Instagram and TikTok and social media is that you like to get online and see the ideal life. We like to get online and see pretty women cooking and caring for their kids. Like it's kind of like um, almost like a release for us, you know? It's like, oh, that's so nice. That's, I wish I had that life, you know? And so we've seen a lot more of these quote trad influencers come out recently. These stay at home mom influencers have gotten really popular. And the thing is, a lot of these women have built an entire brand off of quitting their job and staying home and living on a single income, okay? So I have seen a lot of stay-at-home mom influencers who build their entire brand on the fact that they live on one income and they quit their job to stay home with their kids. And I've even seen clips. I'm not going to name any names or show any people online here. Okay. Because if you know who I'm talking about, you know who I'm talking about. There's plenty of them. They have trad wife in their bio. They um, go on podcasts to talk about how their family lives on one single modest income and how it's possible. And then they talk about how they made the ultimate sacrifice to quit working at all so that they can just stay home and focus entirely on their kids. But then you go to their profile and realize that these are influencers. Like these are content creators. They post content every single day. That takes work. They, you go to their profile and they have a website, a pristine website. <laughs> like, guys, I've had my own side business for a couple of, no more than a couple of years, for a little while now. My website doesn't look that good. <laughs> my website is like just a janky thing that's put together because it just needs, there needs to be a landing page. But you go to these women's websites and it's the most beautiful, pristine website where they're selling ebooks different kinds of merchandise and t-shirts and mugs and there's affiliate links and they have an entire online business and they are selling the fact 
that they are a stay-at-home mom living on a single income. Girl. Girl. (laughs) You are not living on a single income if you have an online business that is an addition to your husband's income. That's like, that's not the definition of a single income. And that's okay. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. I think it's great that there are a lot of moms out there who have found a way to have a side income at home so they can stay home with their kids and still bring in a little bit of extra money to help their family survive. I think that's great. But let's be real here. (laughs) Let's be honest. There's no need to wear the fake, we live on only one income branding. Like I... I saw a clip the other day of a woman who went on a podcast, a pretty uh, popular podcast, and she was like talking about, you know, we live on a single income and and this is what we do. And we have this many kids and we make under, my husband makes under X amount of dollars each year. I'm like, (laughs) I looked at it, I'm like, okay, I bet you this girl has like a full brand. I go to her profile. I am not kidding you. Like exactly what I said, full website, beautiful website. They're selling like 15 to 20 different pieces of merchandise. They've got eBooks. They're selling information products. And I'm like, what is going on here? You guys are, you you have built your brand on a lie. If you have an online business and your own brand about living on a single income, but you're not living on a single income, like that's, that's kind of dishonest. That's dishonest. And again, there is nothing wrong with having a side income as a mom from home. I actually wish that more moms knew that you could bring in a second income by staying home with your children and earning money online. There are so many possibilities. I think you might be surprised, ladies, at how much money you can bring in by just five to 10 hours of work a week while staying home with your babies. Okay. Yeah. You're not going to make like I mean, you could, but at first, definitely you're not going to make as much as your husband is. But even if you bring in like $1,000, $2,000 a month online, that's a great side income. And that, you know what that means? You're no longer living on a single income. So my question is, why can't stay-at-home influencers like this just be honest about the secondary income that they make online? It would actually help a lot of moms in distress realize that there are alternatives to a nine to five grind that requires putting their kids into daycare. But it's almost like these stay-at-home mom influencers are gatekeeping the fact that you can do this from home. And I think that the trad trend has also resulted in a lot of influencers desperately concerned with wearing the correct costume online. They care more about putting on the trad hat and pretending to be trad. Like a lot of these trad Okay, when I say trad, they are self-proclaimed trad. They have trad in their bio. They talk about being a trad wife, a trad mom. They they write books. They sell eBooks. They sell information products. They go on podcasts. They do speeches. Some Many of them have podcasts. Like, own it. You are a part-time working mom. And that's awesome that you can stay home with your kids and do that. But why are we selling this like packaged lie to a lot of other moms who don't realize that there is an alternative. Because I've had a lot of people too, and I've talked to a lot of moms in the DMs because they ask me, you know, I I talk about this and they're shocked. They're like, is there a way to earn, even if I can earn like $1,000 a month at home, is there a way to do that? I'm like, yeah, there's a way to do that. Yeah. And I don't know why, if we really care about moms and care about families, why aren't we sharing that information as influencers who are able to do that? Because you don't only have to be an influencer to bring in a side income. Like I was talking to another girl online. We were talking about how great it is. You can get, you can make a side income doing copywriting, editing, writing, administrative work for these brands. You could do so many things from home, just 10 to 15 hours a week, and you can make a pretty good side income. And I think it's, it's almost like, what's, what are we really trying to do here, right? That's the question I always ask. We want to build healthy whole women for healthy whole families for a thriving society. So what are we really trying to do here? Are we, are we trying to really help moms and families? Or are we trying to maintain the trad trend and the trad brand online? Because with a lot of these, not all, okay, with a lot of these stay-at-home mom influencers, it feels like they're more concerned with, with, with keeping the trad costume on rather than being forthright and being honest and helping other moms realize that there are alternatives because these stay-at-home mom influencers, they found the alternative. They struck gold. They get to stay home with their kids, work a few hours a week, and they get to make 
some side income. Some of them make really good income. Some of them just make like, you know, a couple grand a month, even a grand a month. Still, that's a decent side income that pays for groceries. It could pay for car payment. It could pay for half of your mortgage, like, or even your full mortgage, you know? And my whole thing is I want more moms to have options and have alternatives rather than feeling like the only thing they have to do in this terrible economy is drop their kids off at daycare and go to a nine to five grind that they hate. That's what I wish we had more of. And so when I see people like Ballerina Farm and Nara Smith get hate for being trad, it's funny, right? Because they have millions and millions of followers and they're the ones who get the most hate online for being trad. This is what's so funny to me. Neither of these influencers have ever used the word trad to describe themselves. Not once, never. Ballerina Farm has never called herself a trad wife. Nara never called herself a trad wife. Not once. In fact, they are obviously working moms. Ballerina Farm has a meat delivery service. She has that, you know, she sells all the products for her sourdough stuff. She's going to beauty pageants. She has her own brand. She's honest about that. She's never called herself a trad wife. Nara, she's a working model. She's a signed model. She has talked before on her page about sharing childcare with her husband and her other family members so that she can go do modeling gigs and whatever. These women are more honest than the trad stay-at-home influencers are. You notice that? They are more honest And yet somehow they get like lumped into the category of trad because trad means nothing now. It means everything. So it means nothing. These days, people just slap the word trad on a beautiful wife cooking for her family, wearing a dress online. That's like suddenly trad, you know, because the word trad means nothing. Um, But these women are not even self-proclaimed trad women. Like Ballerina Farm and Nara are working moms. And like Ballerina Farm, like she... She has, okay, yeah, she comes from a lot of money, but she has a great setup in her life. They run a really cute business. They maintain a pristine piece of land in Utah. She's got seven or eight kids and she's with her kids like pretty much all the time. You know, I mean, and and it's funny because I think the lie that is sold by a lot of, not all, but a lot of stay-at-home influencers isn't very helpful to women like that original TikToker. You know, like that original TikToker, She's really d- distressed about the fact that she still has to leave both of her kids in daycare. And there are many other everyday moms like her who are looking for alternatives. And so then you look at all these stay-at-home mom influencers who are preaching about how awesome they are because they quit their job and they're not working anymore and they live on a single income. Like, it's just, it's not even true. These stay-at-home mom influencers have found a great alternative. And I think that more women should know that there are these alternatives that's why I feel I feel very blessed that I get to do what I do. I'm 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 home all day with with my daughter and soon to be my second child too. And I work a few hours a week and I have a little side business and I still have passions on the side that I get to invest in. Like I do health and fitness coaching and I love what I do because I get to work with moms who are trying to improve their life and improve their health. And I get to bring in a side income doing it. And I never have to leave the house if I don't want to. I think we need to be offering moms moms real solutions, offering them alternative lifestyles rather than selling this perfectly packaged trad image that's on Instagram that just seems idyllic and cute. Because like I've said many times before, the trad trend is not actually traditional. There's really nothing about the trad trend that is rooted in true tradition because women and mothers have always worked. I'm sorry to break it to you guys, Because I think that a lot of people who buy into this whole trad trend, they don't realize that the idea of a woman staying home and not contributing at all to the family economy, while the dad is the only one that goes outside to work and the only one that contributes to the family income, this is a very modern concept. I know that it sounds weird because a lot of people just see what they see online and they don't really know what the history is. But I want to show you this tweet from Mega. Her handle is Mega Verma Art. Um, She writes a lot about literature and history and motherhood. And I like a lot of her takes. You know, I don't necessarily agree with her on everything, but I think this tweet is bang on. So let's read this tweet together. She says, 
The idea of the husband going to work and the wife staying behind, this is also a very modern idea. In the true traditional system, that is, the system before the factory ate up humanity, the husband would have his own business or enterprise, a trade, and the wife and family would help him run it. The career was not something separate from the family. When the world was run this way, perhaps people had less materially, but they were far wealthier because they also had less debt. They had more freedom. Their work was meaningful. Most importantly, they had more time with each other rather than with strangers for eight to 10 hours per day. The trads lament that women must go to work instead of being with their families, but they have no problem with men suffering this fate. The reality, the true traditional reality, is that this office work is for neither man nor woman. It is an inhuman modern invention for organizing work, and it serves mainly those who want to make money from interest. In fact, it is only by separating a people from their vocations that they can be politicized with a view to pitting men against women against a backdrop of a fake history created by bankers and financiers. I have talked so many times and tweeted so many times about the empty trad movement. And I think this is so well articulated, better articulated than I think I've ever been able to articulate it. Because like I said, there are two things happening here that the trads don't realize. Number one, the idea that the woman doesn't contribute at all to the family income is totally new and modern. In fact, if a woman did not contribute to the family income, like she was considered totally useless. What do you think a dowry was for? Because the family was always historically an economic unit. That's what the family was. One of the, one of, not the, but one of the primary goals of the family of getting married and having children and expanding your family was so that you create an independent economic unit so that you could thrive and you could leave a legacy. And you could have an enterprise or a trade or a business that was your own, that was meaningful, that belonged to the family. So it is a very modern concept that the mom should never, ever contribute to the family income. Because what you see now is like this whole trad thing. It's like, like I said earlier, they think it's, they condemn and chastise women who bring in anything financially to the family. And they also condemn and chastise women who have any sort of help with their kids. It's like, you shouldn't have any help with your kids. If you have any sort of help from family or, or, you know, or friends or your high trust village, it's like, you're not really a mom. It's like, what, what do you think our ancestors did? They had help from everyone. They lived in these high trust villages. And then the second thing that a lot of these trads don't realize is that it is also unnatural for a husband to go out of the house and work in a cold office for eight to 10 hours a day and not really have any time with his family during the week. Because like Mega said, the whole, the true traditional system before industrialization was that the husband had his own business or enterprise and the wife and the family were an integral part of it. They contributed to it. The career wasn't something separate from the family. It was part of the family economic unit. And this is why there is so much unrest and unhappiness and unfulfillment in the modern family model, because we think that the anomaly and the small sliver of history of the 1950s, which is where a lot of this trad stuff comes from, we think that that's how the family unit was forever. I asked someone online once, I was like, what does trad mean? And someone said, it means the woman stays home and the husband goes to work. I'm like, oh my gosh. That is like the nutshell of what the 1950s uh, advertisements looked like, which was, by the way, a huge part of consumerism. They promoted this whole trad um, thing so they could sell washer machines and, and dishwashers and refrigerators. Like it was part of the consumerist industry. So trad means nothing today. And that's why there are a lot of people who are just confused. And they think that a woman who contributes at all to the family is like not a real mom and not a real mother, but they don't know historically that all women and mothers worked. They always worked in the context of the home. They were not sending their kids to daycare while they worked in a factory or an office. But that is what the history was. That's what true tradition was. And we've lost that. So I think that as we see these videos like the original TikTok or that mom, and as we're asking ourselves, what are the solutions here for helping mothers and helping families? We have to think about what the past was. It doesn't mean we're going to automatically go back to it. We're not 
like romantically thinking about the past. We just have to be clear about what the true traditional system was so that we have more clarity, so that we can ask ourselves meaningful, productive questions of how can we offer something better to moms within the context of our modern system today. And I think one of the things we have to do is we have to acknowledge the economy is at its probably absolute worst. And we have to start preparing women from a young age to say, hey, do you know you want a family one day? Even if you think you want a family one day, it's a good idea to prioritize a career that allows you flexibility or a career that allows you to like, you know, make a pretty good amount of money in the in the first few years so you can maybe save up and stay home for a few years with the kids or whatever it is. But stop going into jobs like liberal arts. Like, and I say this as someone who did a liberal arts degree, like it was pretty much a waste to everything I'm doing now. Work like psychology and social work, this kind of stuff. Like it's not the kind of work that, not the kind of career that's conducive to raising young children. Um, I had a woman in my comments say, I think what she was saying, she's like, be a notary public. It's like being a notary is a great stay at home job because it takes like a few hours of work and you get to do everything from home. You know, asking ourselves as young women, like, what can we do? What kind of career paths can we take that's going to give us the flexibility to stay home whenever we need to with our young kids? And then we also need to acknowledge that the, the family unit we have now is, is very modern and it's not really natural or rooted in history or true tradition. And so that takes a lot of the pressure off. And it, it kind of breaks down this whole trad facade. So those are just some thoughts. This is a long enough episode. I think I'll wrap it up now. But, um, you know, I don't mean any hate to any of these stay-at-home mom influencers who, like, pretend that they live on a single income. Or because I see a lot of reels, too, and videos where the woman's like, I used to work. And now the only things I do are chef and chauffeur and made for my husband and kids. And that's the way I prefer it. And meanwhile, they've got like 250,000 followers on Instagram. I'm like, you forgot to put content creator in there and influencer in there. And it's okay to be a content creator, but like you're naming off all of these things that you do at home and you pretend like you don't also have a side job of creating content every day. Like that takes time. That's a little side gig. And that's part of what you do as well. And I just think that it's better for moms and for families to be honest because it gives moms the idea that they have an alternative and there are other options out there besides the nine to five grind. And I think that if there are a lot of stay at home mom influencers who have found that alternative, why don't we share it with the other everyday moms who are struggling with the nine to five grind and sending their kids to daycare? Those are just some thoughts. So let me know what you guys think. I slept on my neck wrong. so. Oh, it hurts to just turn my head. That's all I got for today. We've got another viral video that I want to cover in the next one. Um, the single women are at it again, claiming that their life is so much better than having kids. And we're going to talk about why the problem is not that they're not having kids. The problem is something much deeper. So until next time, bye everybody.